Welcome back to Grim Advice with Greta Myers. You've entered the grimoire, let's turn the page together. Alright, I did not actually do any filming on Saturday. I just released a blooper video. Shout out to my editor. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. I was really proud of him for making it look great, even though I looked absolutely ridiculous. I'm really good at that, looking ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to slate this week's Viewings. Okay. Today, it looks like we're gonna have another sequel. Thumbling's Travels. Woo. Um, then Fowler's Fowl. The Juniper Tree. Old Sultan and the Six Swans. So, without further ado, Thumbling's Travels. A certain tailor had a son, who happened to be small and no bigger than a thumb, and on this account he was always called Thumbling. He had, however, some courage in him, and said to his father, Father, I must go and will go out into this world. That's right, my son, said the old man, and took a long darning needle and made a knob of, ce knob of sealing wax on it, it at the end at the candle, and there is a sword for you to take with you on the way. Then the little tailor wanted to have one more meal with them, and hopped into the kitchen to see what his mother had cooked for the last time. It was just dish dished up, and the dish stood on the hearth. If then he said, Mother, what is there to eat today? See for yourself, said the mother. So Thumbling jumped onto the hearth and peeped into the dish, but as he stretched his neck in too far, the steam from the food caught hold of him and carried him up the chimney. He rode about it in the air on the steam for a while, until at length he sank down to the ground again. Now the little tailor was outside in the wide world, and he traveled about and went to work with a master in his craft, but the food was not good enough for him. Mistress, if you give us no better food, said Thumbling, I will go away, and early tomorrow morning I will write with chalk on the door of your house, too many potatoes, too little meat. Farewell, Mr. Potato King, you wretched grasshopper, said the angry mistress, and seized a dishcloth and was just going to strike him, but the little tailor crept nimbly under a thimble, peeped out from beneath it, and put his tongue out at the mistress. She took up the thimble and wanted to get hold of him, but little Thumbling hopped out into the cloth, and while the mistress was opening it out and looking for him, he got into a crevice in the table. Ho, ho, lady mistress, cried he, and thrust his head out, and when she began to strike him, he leapt down into the drawer. At last, however, she caught him and drove him out of the house. The little tailor journeyed on and came to a great forest, and there he fell in with a band of robbers who had a design to steal the king's treasure. When they saw the little tailor, they thought, a little fellow like that can creep through a keyhole and serve a picklock to us. Hello, cried one of them. You, giant Goliath, uh, will you go to the treasure chamber with us? You can slip yourself in and throw out the money. Thumbling reflected a while, and at length he said, Yes, and went with them to the treasure chamber. Then he looked at the doors above and below and see, uh, to see if there was any crack in them. It was not long before he spied one which was broad enough to let him in. He was therefore above uh, to get in at once. But one of the two sentries who stood before the door observed him and said to the other, What an ugly spider is creeping there. I will kill it. Leave the poor creature alone, said the other. It has done you no harm. Then Thumbling got safely through the crevice into the treasure chamber, opened the window beneath which the robbers were standing, and threw it out to them one tailor after another. Then the little tailor was in the full swing of his work. He heard the king coming to inspect his treasure chamber and crept hastily into a hiding place. The king noticed that several solid tailors were missing, but could not conceive who had stolen them, for locks and bolts were in good condition, and all seemed well guarded. Then he went away again and said to the sentries, Be on the watch, someone is after the money. When Thumbling recommended uh, his labors, they heard the money moving, and a sound of clink, clink, clink. They ran swiftly in to seize the thief, but the little tailor who heard them coming was still swifter and leapt into a corner and covered himself with a tailor, so that nothing could be seen of him, and the, at the same time he mocked the sentries and cried, Here I am! The sentries ran over, but as they got there, he had already hopped into another corner under a tailor and was crying, Ho ho! Here I am! <coughs> and the watchman sprang there in haste, but Thumbling had long uh, ago got into a third corner and was crying, Ho ho! Here am I! 
and thus he made fools of them and drove them so long round about the treasure chamber that they were weary and went away. Um, then little by little he threw all the tailors out, uh, dispatching the last with all his might, then hopped nimbly upon it and flew down with it through the window. The robbers paid him great compliments. You are a valiant hero, said they. Will you be our captain? Thumbling, however, declined and said he wanted to see the world first. They now divided the booty, but the little tailor only asked for a cruiser because he could not carry more. Then he, uh, he once more buckled on his sword, bade the robbers goodbye, and took to the road. First, he went to work with some masters, but he had no liking for that, and at last he hired himself as a servant in an inn. The maids, however, could not endure him, for he saw all they did secretly without their seeing him, and he told their, ma their master and mistress what they, um, what they had taken off the plates and carried away out of the cellar for themselves. Then said they, Wait, and we will pay you off, and arrange with each other to play a trick. Soon afterwards, when one of the maids was mowing in the garden, and saw Thumbling jumping out and creeping up and down the plants, she mowed him up quickly with the grass, and tied all in a great cloth, and secretly threw it to the cows. Now amongst them there was a great black one, who swallowed him down without hurting him. Down below, however, it did not please him, for it was quite dark, and there was no candle burning. When the cow was being milked, he cried, Strip, strap, strew, will the pail soon be full? But the noise of the milking prevented his, uh, his being understood. After this, the master of the house came into the barn and said, That cow shall be killed tomorrow. Then Thumbling was so alarmed that he cried out in a clear voice, Let me out first, I, for I am shut up inside her. The master heard that quite well, but did not know where the voice came from. <laughs> where are you? asked he. In the black one, answered Thumbling, but the master did not understand what he meant and went out. Next morning the cow was killed. Happily, Thumbling did not meet with one blow at the cutting up and chopping. He got among the sausage meat. Now when the butcher came and began to work, he cried out with all his might, Don't chop too deep! Don't chop too deep! I am amongst it! No one heard this because of the noise of the chopping knife. Now poor Thumbling was in trouble, but trouble sharpens the wits, and he sprang out so adroitly between the blows that none of them touched him, and he escaped with a whole skin. But still he could not get away, and he could only let himself be thrust into a black pudding with the bits of bacon. His quarters uh, there were rather confined, and besides that he was hung up in the chimney to be smoked, and their time did hang terribly heavy on his hands. In winter he was taken down again as the black pudding was to be served to a guest. When the hostess was cutting it in slices, he took care not to stretch out his head too far lest a bit of it should be cut off. At last he saw his opportunity, cleared a passage for himself, and jumped out. The little tailor, however, would not stay any longer in a house where he fared so badly so at once set out on his journey again, but his liberty did not last long. In the open country he met with a fox, who snapped him up in a fit of absence. Hello, Mr. Fox, cried the little tailor. It is I who am sticking in your throat. Set me at liberty again. You are right, answered the fox. You are next to nothing for me. But if you will promise me the fowls in your father's yard, I will let you go. With all my heart, replied Thumbling, you shall have all the roosters and hens that I promise you. Then the fox let him go and even carried him home. When the father once more saw his dear son, he willingly gave the fox all the fowls which he had. For this I likewise bring you a handsome bit of money, said Thumbling, and gave his father the cruiser which he earned on his travels. But why did the fox get the poor chickens to eat? Oh, you goose, your father would surely love his child far more than the fowls in the yard. Okay. First off, the part that made me laugh. He's, th his thumbling's like literally, I'm in the cow! Please don't kill me! And they're like, where, where are you? He's like, in the cow! <laughs> they're like, yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. It must be crazy. <laughs> Secondly, it says he, like, hides under a piece of money, and then he hides under, like, a thimble. But it says he's the size of a thumb. I'm sorry. Since when are thimbles that bit thim thimbles? Wow. 
tumbling, thumb, thimbles, whatever. What? Did like, did like Wilhelm and Jacob Grimm have really small thumbs? Thumbling can be heard, like from the cow, like the farmer's just standing there at the base of the door, like at the doorway. It sounds like, and then he's like, "Yo, don't kill me!" And he's like, "I can hear you fine, but over the sound of milking and a chopping knife, apparently he can't be heard." You know, this is honestly like the extended edition, <laughs> like a different cut of thumbling, like Thumbelina, Thumpkin, Tom Thumb, it's just more, more of the same. Um, yeah, so, okay, couple points I want to make. First off, with the when he's like, "Your cooking sucks." Like, if you don't start giving us better food, I'm gonna like write on the door, "Man, this house like their cooking sucks." And she's like, "You wretched grasshopper!" <laughs> that just cracks me up for some reason. I just thought it was funny. Oh, yeah, that's that's my new insult, people. I'm just gonna be like, you wretched grasshopper! <laughs> what? No, you heard me. You heard me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, couple points I wanna make. So, in the other version of Thumbling, like, his adventures were really rapid. Okay, first off, it says that um, trouble sharpens the wits, and it does. Like, you're like, man, I don't know how I just did that. Like, you don't think to jump out of the way of a shopping cart or a car that's coming right at you. You just do. You know? And, yeah. Sometimes. So if you don't think you're smart, think again. Maybe you're just not being challenged enough. Or your your life is too boring. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so then, so in the other thumbling, his, his travels, like, seem really, this happened, this happened, this happened, and this happened. There's not a lot of filler space. Like, even when he got eaten, he got immediately eaten again, and then, like, controlled the fox to go into ha his house, you know? You know? Or whatever. You know, it was a fox, yeah. And it just is very fast. But here in this one, this is what I this is my big distinct difference between the two. Is that he had to wait a full I don't know when cows are slaughtered for slaughtering purposes. I don't know what time of year that happens, but it says Yeah, it says he had to wait till winter. Whatever, like, however long, even, even if that's just the end of summer till winter, or, like, October till winter, that's a couple of months. Maybe five or six. I can't, I can't do math. Um, that's a good number of months, and it says, time does hang heavy on, ter <laughs> and there time did hang terribly heavy on his hands. I don't know why it's hanging on his hands, but here's my point. Sometimes, there are situations that suck. And everyone around you is like, yeah, this really sucks. And all you can do is wait. Like, does, you, there's nothing you can do. Like, 
coming back to that, that's a lie. I just lied to you. My apologies. But there's not a lot you can do. There, there are some situations where it just requires you to wait it out. And it sucks. And nobody likes doing that. And it's terrible. But, but here, he didn't... He didn't, well, I, I don't know. It doesn't say he didn't give up hope. But the fact that, like, he is ready and he's prepared for whatever is going to happen the second that the meat that he's chilling in, whatever, is, like, he, he, he has a plan. He doesn't just accept it, like, take me, I'll be eaten or whatever, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> he didn't do that. Like, he was, he was prepared and ready for whatever needed to happen. So, okay. So back to my, there's nothing you can do. That's false! Falsehood lies right there. Hot take. You can do something. You can prepare. You can think about the situation. Coming back to the other second. You can think about the situation. You can decide what you want to do when your waiting is done. And sometimes the problem can be as small as waiting for a package or a letter or whatever from someone. They're like, I'm gonna send you a thing. And you're like, cool. You're just you're waiting. Yeah. Or sometimes it can be as serious as you're just kind of waiting for some big life important event to happen, be that like graduation, or someone to get better, or you to get better, or someone, yeah. That kind of situation, where it's a lot heavier. So, you can like, wait, like it's, back to the easier symbol one of like, a package, like we've all had that, where, where you, you order something, or someone's like, I'm gonna send you something, and so you're just waiting. You're like, is it, is it today? And you check, you check the mail eagerly, and then you're like, oh, it's never gonna happen. So don't stop checking the mail, you know? You know? Am I making sense? Like, giving up would, in that situation would be like, it's never gonna come. I'm just gonna stop checking the mail, because it's never there. Which is just, just, that's kinda, or like, Hold on, hold on a second. Um, you know, and then, okay, but sometimes you think about a situation too much, right? So, the key is to wait and give, like, not give up hope, but at the same time not obsess over X thing. Because if the, all you can do really is wait and keep spirits up, then, then, then worrying about the situation is no good, no buen, no, no good, no bueno, I, yeah, I apologize, um, yeah. now, back to what I was saying before, is that sometimes you're like, oh, all I can do is wait, right, and so you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and wait right, right, so, here's the thing. Sometimes you gotta like check and make sure that's all you can do still. Like, for example, on that package, like maybe it got lost in the mail. Maybe that person actually hasn't sent it yet. Maybe your order didn't go through. Maybe, you know. Maybe you need to call the company and be like, hello? Like, we still good? Like, is this still coming to my house? Or whatever I ordered it to, like, you know? You know? You know? So sometimes you gotta check. Be like, is there something actually I can do now? Like, maybe, maybe Thumbling in this situation was like, can I, like, use my sword and, like, get out of the meat now? And he could. Or he decided, no, that's not the, the best thing to do right now. Or whatever. You know? So sometimes, so, 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 let me, let me sum it up. Waiting is not easy, but we all gotta do it sometimes. It sucks, and everybody hates it. I think it, most, 9 out of 10 people can agree that they don't like waiting. 
Like, okay. Some people are more patient than others. But even those people are like, okay, this is enough waiting, I'm done. Like, you know, everyone's got a limit. <sighs> okay, that's, that's my sum up. Sometimes that's all you can do, is wait and hope. But, but, but sometimes it's all you can do to wait. Like, sometimes you're just done, you're like, I can't hope right now. So just wait. You know, you pick it up and throw it down. Okay. And then the, the ending. The ending of this thing. Thumbling says to his dad, he's like, here's the money I gave you. And it's awesome, but like, why did you actually give the fox the chickens? Like... You could have just killed him or whatever. And the dad's like, Oh, you goose, your father would surely love his child far more than the fowls in the yard. Find you people like that who, no matter the situation, no matter circumstance, like if you're friends and you're like working on a project together, find people who put you over the project. If you're. And all you people, I'm looking, you know who I'm talking about, if I'm talking about you, to you, if you know me, whatever, you know. Find you people who, like, care about you as a person more than whatever's going on. Like, if you're writing a story together, they care about you more than the story. If you're there, if you're, like, if you're planning your own wedding, or your friend's wedding and they're freaking out and having cold feet or whatever they're just not they're they're not okay right now at their own wedding or you're you're in that situation where you're not okay you need friends who will be like whoa okay do we need to stop the whole wedding like what is what do you need right now like they care more about you than be like well you'll be fine get out there like like Yes, it's important that your friends push you and care about you, your family and whatever. However, it's also really important that they care about you enough to know, okay, they're more important than this thing that's happening right now. You know? And you're more important than whatever thing is happening right now. Take care of you. You know? Like, if you want your friends that will do that for you, that are like, you're more important than this thing, do that to yourself too! Because you should be your own best friend. You're the best. You're valid. <laughs> and again, I'm talking to myself as much as I am to you. But seriously, if you're doing something and you're enjoying what you're doing, but it's you need a moment to just take care of yourself and even if that moment is like a week or like two days or like a month take care of you cause you're the best and I think yeah I'm pretty sure today was national best friend day or whatever get you friends like that yeah it was, it was sometime soon or recently whatever you pick it up when I'm thrown down I hope you are you better be I'm watching you I'm also watching the mirror behind the camera I'm just like yeah okay with that we've reached uh, thank you for joining us for another happily ever after or not so happily ever after that's up for you to decide whatever you decide is valid because you're valid and you're the best yeah. And so, either way, this is the end of the episode, so tune in later and we can learn more and turn a new page together.